Welcome to Simsbury Land Trust presentation, Morticulture, the abundant life in old dead trees. We manage many acres of forested land and have become interested in how best to steward our preserves. My name is Marjorie Winters, I'll be your host. This is part two of our Morticulture series. Turn over any old log in the woods and you'll find that it's, it, there are many, many things underneath, many insects and creatures underneath. The woody debris provides a well-stocked grocery store. Here are just some of the creatures that you might find under the log. I like to think of old dead trees, not only the logs, but the, the snags as they're standing, to be an apartment building grocery store. There, there's just so much going on in these old dead trees. Those holes are excavated by a keystone species. Our woodpeckers are the general contractors. They are the ones that make these holes as they're looking for insects, but they also make the nesting cavities to raise their own young. We have about seven, we have seven different species of woodpeckers and each of them um, excavate their own particular kind of hole, although some of the smaller birds also excavate holes like this little chickadee. Above almost half of North American native bird species rely on these snags for at least a portion of their life cycle, especially to raise their young. And here you can see that we've got a variety of creatures from titmice and bluebirds, owls, but also a lot of mammals and some amphibians will use these nesting cavities for protection and for nesting. The larger snags provide host, uh, homes for lots of other animals, uh, larger animals such as these, this black and this uh, turkey vulture. They will nest in these old trees and the larger the tree, the larger the animal that will use it. This is a tree that was uh, used by a black bear. The old dead trees also provide wonderful sites for hunting, uh, hunting perches for the eagles and other raptors. And these old hollow trees really do provide an incredible array of homes for a variety of species. A variety of insects are responsible for creating some of these holes in the trees. When insects attack a tree and create an old dead tree, uh, they, they weaken the tree and it allows the fungus to get inside the tree. And these bark beetle outbreaks are often of great concern to people that they're, they're going to be injuring the trees and therefore the health of the forest. But actually, these bark beetle outbreaks actually increase the diversity of the forest. Uh, the trees that are killed by bark beetles um, ha are sites for woodpeckers to come and create their nesting cavities. And as the insects get into the old snags and the old logs on the ground, they become sources of food for a lot of other animals such as the, not only the woodpeckers, but the, the skunks, the raccoons, and the bears. It's one of the reasons the bears have those wonderful claws is to rip apart the old trees and turn them back into forest soil. With the nesting cavities, it provides a home for a lot of the, the bird species that will be raising their chicks. The main food for these birds is caterpillars. Caterpillars are an important source of food for the baby chicks. It takes between six thousand to ten thousand caterpillars to raise one nest of baby chickadees. So having these birds in the forest means that they are able to control the caterpillar populations that would otherwise injure the living trees. Wherever we have old trees, we also have abundant lichen. And the old trees have more and more diverse lichen. Often you'll see these branches on the ground and the lichen that's used, that grows on these trees are often used by hummingbirds to make their nest and they stick them together with spider webs. The fungus that grows on the little dead trees also becomes food for a, a wide variety of animals, turtles, insects, birds, mice, squirrels, and deer. The old dead logs, as they rot, this one's rotting from the outside in, then become a nurse log for seedlings. You can often find little plants growing on these old rotting logs or on the old rotting stems. And here you can see a tree that has fallen down. The seedlings have grown into mature trees when you go into the woods, see if you can find a nurse log that has become home for many, many trees. These old decaying logs also become shelter for a variety of animals. Mice and snakes and shrews will seek refuge in the, the moisture of the under of the log. There are a lot of lovely insects that will use these trees. Some of them eat the wood, like the termites, but some of them, like the carpenter ants, simply make holes to raise their, their young. This lovely man, E.O. Wilson, an entomologist, who just recently passed, um, said that those little creatures, the insects, are the ones that run the world. And the ants were one of his favorite things. 
The ants are the most common invertebrate in our forest ecosystems and they're critically important. As the tree ages, the heartwood softens and rots. These ants and the carpenter ants will move in. They open up the, the, the wood and then they are used all the... As they open up the wood, they help return the nutrients to the soil, bringing the life cycle back to the beginning. These ants also act as bodyguards, protecting the tree from some of the insects that attack the tree, especially the caterpillars for the gypsy moth and the tent caterpillars. In some areas, the ants can grade, grade compost in their ant hills, and there are hot spots of nutrition. You have a situation where the dead trees provide shelter for the ants, the ants feed on the insects that would eat the trees, and the ant wastes then nourish the trees. These ants also provide incredible food, valuable food sources for a variety of birds and the larger animals. These old dead stumps also become home for solitary and colonial bees, which pollinate our flowers and help produce the berries in the forest. So there's a whole food web going on that is fed in part by the decaying wood products. And more than 40 vertebrate species rely on the presence of dead trees and woody debris. Deadwood is one of the greatest resources for our, our salamanders in a forest. Salamanders are an incredibly abundant species. They're the most abundant vertebrate in our forest ecosystem and compose the greatest vertebrate biomass in the eastern forest. They're also a major food source for many of the animals that live in the forest, so they're part of the forest food chain. And they themselves are predator, eating a lot of the insects that can be found on the forest floor. There's another role that the coarse woody material plays. It helps to stabilize the slopes, reduces erosion, and shelter as well as sheltering the seedlings. In our river systems, the woody material has an important role in stream restoration. It traps sediment and provides sheltered habitat for fish and other animals in their stream systems. As a matter of fact, the more logs in the stream, the more fish we have. So an ecologically healthy forest has dead trees, broken tops, and broken logs. And the removal of these dead trees after a wildfire or beetle outbreak robs the soil of the ecosystem that is necessary to support the microorganisms. And that organic material is essentially to the microorganisms in the forest soil. So sometimes when we have an outbreak, a uh, windstorm, we are tempted to do salvage logging, and that is removing that material from, those, from the, or, the forest soil. And of concern in our managed forests, we really don't have a lot of dead material on the ground. Removal of the dead material can result in the removal of one-fifth of the animals in the ecosystem and jeopardizes the future productivity of the soils and the forest itself. So when you look down on the ground and you don't see any woody debris, it's not necessarily the sign of a healthy, well-managed forest. Some of our forests that are logged, only a few trees are allowed to remain to be the seed sources for future trees, but there's very little wood material left on the ground. The plan is to remove those larger trees as they become of a harvestable size and as the other tree, the younger trees grow in. So as a result, we have very few of these old, old, old wolf trees that we currently have in our forest. There are really no plans for ensuring that we have these large, important habitat trees. We do have a few old growth forests in Connecticut. The cathedral pines, before they were blown down in a windstorm, were some of our oldest trees in the state. And only a small portion of our landscape is really covered by old growth forest. Our trends in forestry are such that we constantly are removing our old growth trees. And you can see that this is one of the rarest of our landscapes. There is a new network of old growth forests and Belden Forest in Simsbury is the first one in Connecticut. I would think that we'd be interested in these old, the imports of these old trees. After all, the Charter Oak played a very important part in our Connecticut history. The fact that it was an old, large, hollow tree allowed us to hide our charter in there and kept us as a state. I love this picture as I took in the McLean Game Refuge of a wonderful old tree. And this quote by Aldo Leopold, the real jewel of my disease-ridden woodlot is the pronotary warbler. The flash of his gold and blue plumage amid the dank decay of the June woods in itself is proof that dead trees are transmuted into living animals and vice versa. So I encourage you on your next walk through the woods, make sure you look down and marvel at the recycling of the trees that goes on in our woodlands. If there are any topics you would like to see in the Simsbury Land Trust cover, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching.
Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.